Good morning to the three of you, and uh, we welcome. We allocated 10 minutes for your submission this morning, and that's uh, total and time, including any questions there may or may not be. How you choose to use that is entirely up to you, you guys, but the floor is yours. Welcome. So welcome the opportunity to make some further comments to our submission. Uh, Tasman District Council, we're a unitary authority, top of the South Island, um, 10,000 square kilometres of uh, land area, population of about 60,000 people, um, and recent census data uh, indicates it's been the fastest growing region over the last 10 years. So um, clearly key interest for us around consenting um, processes. Uh, our main concerns in our submission uh, elevated discretionary powers for ministers, the diminished priority for environmental protection, the increased burden on local authorities around compliance and post-consenting uh, monitoring, lack of definition on national and regional significance thresholds, the 10-day timeframe for local government uh, feedback and input, a process not necessarily aligned to local authority servicing needs, particularly around urban development uh, and housing, and the limited appeal rights and the timeframes for judicial processes. And I'll just expand on those a bit um, and then hopefully leave some time for questions. So our key recommendations include uh, around the purpose, including associated provisions that demonstrate that there has been a consideration of all RMA matters, including those effects not necessarily addressed under part two that the decision-making powers are expended to include the Minister for the Environment in the uh, decision-making process uh, and uh, increasing the, and making the uh, expert advice component uh, a mandatory requirement for Ministers uh, to seek that advice through the expert panels. The required judicial decisions, and whether they are uh, limited as to matters of law as currently suggested or um, expanded to matters of fact as well, to ensure that judicial decisions also have a time frame attached to them. Uh, and certainly experience from the previous fast track process under a previous uh, government indicated that in some cases, while the initial fast track process was um, re timely, the subsequent judicial processes that followed that were quite extensive, time consuming, and potentially affected the viability of projects that were put through that process. Uh, the eligibility, uh, we're concerned that it's important to identify early those projects or posts that may not pass go or should not pass go. For example, it may be that projects have already been declined through a previous process, um, but that's something we think should be considered. Providing clearer criteria and thresholds that define nationally and regionally significant projects. Ensuring proposals clearly identify how there will be significant public benefit include a gateway or threshold test that ministers must consider before granting an application for prohibited activities. Uh, touching on council's role and cost recovery, uh, we think it's important to clarify uh, their role and support local authorities by uh, potentially changing the 10-day timeframe uh, for feedback and input, so it's more realistic to give local authorities the ability to participate um, for example, to input and provide evidence to expert panels where they're set up. Um, we do have a lot of local knowledge and expertise, but that does require time to respond in 10 days is pretty short. Um, clarifying the scope of council roles, specifically what sort of information may be expected and in what format. Clarifying who's responsible for defending appeals to consents, should, they, should that either be on matters of law or if it changes to include matters of fact. We would like to see councils engaged and applicants at least encouraged, if not required, to engage with uh, councils in the pre-application as they're putting their applications together, particularly around the sort of consent conditions um, to ensure that they're actually enforceable, practical and pragmatic. And if that's done perhaps uh, in the pre-application process, pre-submission into the fast track, that may um, affect the need for extending the 10-day timeframe. So the two th those two things are linked together. The more that can be done pre-application, um, obviously the less that needs to be done during it. Ensure that councils can recover costs, particularly post-granting uh, costs around compliance and monitoring. Uh, strengthening provisions to allow local expertise to inform applications where local communities will be affected. 
making it mandatory to consider iwi management plans, strategies, or cultural impact assessments, ensuring that natural hazards um, and uh, risk assessments are mandatory. And I know a number of submissions have touched on the issue around ensuring that natural hazards are taken account of throughout the process. Uh, includability to amend plans, uh, district plans, regional plans, post-consent granting. For example, um, under the previous special housing area process, uh, in our case, some quite large land areas were um, changed for housing under that process, but it left the underlying zoning uh, as it was. And that then involved council having to go through and do a plan change to change the underlying zoning, which all seems um, costly, bureaucratic and time consuming. And if that's included in the fast track process, um, that would be really useful. Uh, and ultimately, our last point is to ensure transparent decision making by ensuring that discretion is available to the expert panel uh, to hold hearings uh, and that that is applied consistently across applications and across the country. Uh, so that's the key points I'd like to make. Hopefully there's a bit of time left for questions. Yes, there is. Thank you very much. Our first question for you is from Celia Wade-Brown, followed by Todd Stevenson. Kira, thank you for a very considered um, submission. I wanted to ask in two areas. First of all, the pressure this will put on councils and, and your council in particular, having staff ready to jump to respond when we don't know how many projects will come up in your area or not. I mean, I imagine that you don't have people just waiting to see what comes in. That's my first question. Uh, no, we don't. But that's already the case. We're never quite sure what applications might land on um, council's desk, even in the current um, resource management framework. And it can be really peaky. You can go through periods where there's not too much and then suddenly there's a whole lot of applications. So that's something we manage. I think that's why we'd encourage um, that early engagement with local authorities around applications so that some of that um, work around the sort of things that councils will ultimately have to monitor and then ensure compliance with um, are sorted out early. And if that's done uh, between the applicant and the council pre-submission into the fast track process, that would help facilitate that being efficient. If that isn't done, we think the 10 day timeframe is far too short for councils to be able to respond adequately. Yeah, I understand, understand um we're always uh, trying to forecast. Yeah. Um, the other area was um, when you're talking about the environmental effects and coastal hazards and so forth, are you seeing a move in general away from hard infrastructure, sort of seawalls and dock banks to a more, um, I guess, flexible and natural infrastructure response? And if so, how do you see that happening, potentially happening with some of these bigger projects? Uh, I think, yes, yes, we are seeing a range of options um, coming into play. I think it's very similar to the right tree, right place kind of debate around um, carbon. It's, it's, it's right solution for right location. And sometimes that is absolutely um, uh, more natural processes, and sometimes it is more hard processes, and sometimes it's a combination of both. So I think ensuring that there's the flexibility um, to have the right solution in the right location, and they won't always be the same. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Now we have a question for you from Todd Stevenson. Yeah, very, very quick one. Thank you, and thank you for the effort you put into your submission. It's uh, very detailed, so thank you for that. Just really quickly, you mentioned 10 days not being enough for councils. Do you have an idea, in an ideal world, how long would you want or what, what would be a more realistic? Because, yeah, don't say don't say uh, two months, but uh, okay. what no, do you look, think would be more I, realistic? I, look, I think 20 days is probably more realistic. So okay. effectively, I guess, four working, four working weeks. Um, having said that, if there is that free engagement uh, and the applicant yes. has already engaged with local authorities, then I think that time frame can be shorter. Uh, so, yeah. I, and I, and it, that would actually be a more effective and efficient way for the whole thing to operate if that if that's done earlier, rather than it becoming something that is kind of crammed in the middle for want of a better term. No, thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, thank you very much to the three of you. We don't appear to have any further questions, but thank you for your very comprehensive and well thought out submission this morning. Mm -hmm.